so we're here again. I'm sorry. This movie was on HBO Max, so I rewatched it exactly on the day it was taken off. Everybody loves somebody. What's the point of taking off movies? They're gonna do this to the other stuff too. <laughs> Who would watch Back in Action without the excuse of it being on HBO Max? I don't know, I might have it on a crusty DVD, but might as well take the time to talk about it. Oh, and we're starting at the very beginning. Before it was a movie. Joe Dante actually wanted it to be a weird movie about Termite Terrence. The studio used for making Looney Tunes cartoons. But Warner Bros. went like, okay. You got any basketball or inflation? It wasn't close enough to Space Jam. Warner Bros. just don't want to make a movie about Looney Tunes drawing themselves. The beast they want more action. Kids need this flashing in their eyes if they're going to see a funny cartoon movie. I liked what we got. Action isn't a bad movie, but uh, no doubt this, this, this right here probably would have been a classic. Probably way less profitable, but neither was action. So yeah, who's right? Joe Dante or the company that made The Adventures of Pluto Nash? It's kind of sad that this movie was a flop. Not a major one. It rides the edge of being a classic. I'm just playing. This was $3 at Walmart. It had a video game, which I still have to complete. It's good. Average PS2 game. Made when 3D platformers were good. Better than My Stop Smoking Coach. There wasn't much of hype going for this movie. There was merchandise. Good lord. Well, Space Jam was a big success, which movie do you think was worse? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Race Ram. Come on, back in action didn't deserve this. It, it should have been you. The beast inside, there's nowhere we can hide. No matter what we breed, we still are made of greed. Why do I actually kind of like this movie? Elmer Fudd is inside this disc. Halfway through this movie, it felt like it was over. I wasn't tired of it. Just so much happened. There were like seven locations that all feel like they could be finales. It's just so compact, and the entire time they're trying to shove all these characters in. Sometimes scenes stop so you can see Foghorn Leghorn, but you know, that, that cameo was good and made sense. Boy, I say boy, this anime stuff is garbage! Sam and Ralph fighting. Okay, nice background gag, but can you please lower the volume on that cartoon sound effects 100% best? I, I like funny stuff that you can notice re-watching the movie. Sometimes they, they do the cameo as well. Bunch of long forgotten tunes giving Bugs gifts. Where's Buddy? There's this dog gambling joke where the characters just add to it. They, they had an hour and a half. They, they tried to cram all these guys in. It's just sad to see Porky get less than a minute of screen time. He wasn't as big in like 2004. Now he's kind of seen as part of the main main tunes. This movie goes through a kind of bounty hunter setup for each location. The, vi the, the villain tunes get way more screen time, which is fine. They are very important characters. It just feels like major players are missing. <laughs> Some villains are also treated differently with like way different screen time. They should have just all had some kind of final role in the last act. Wiley and Marvin get one. Marvin becoming basically the villain of the film for like five seconds. I think they could have easily done this if you're going to have Daffy and Bugs split up from the humans and make it enjoyable. Don't have a fight scene with Brendan Fraser against a giant CGI robot dog. Every day I wake up, my alarm reminds me to question why they put this scene in the movie. Yosemite Sam and Elmer Fudd are never seen in this final battle. You, you can just have them, you know, going up against these two. Why not do something interesting? <laughs> Who is this? Who wanted this? Why is it in the movie? The director made an attempt to put as many Looney Tunes references as possible. I, I can't believe this was his doing. The wiki article for him has like five sentences. Robo dog resembles frisky puppy. Oh guys, I, I can't believe it. It was just a frisky puppy reference. My argument is invalid. Just a total frisky puppy moment here. The worst part is that Elmer Fudd was going to have some more screen time with good jokes. These, these cut scenes were mostly justified. One is just a spaceship fight, which already happens, but this one made sense and actually extends a scene without any context. In the movie, Daffy is describing a movie without bugs in it. In these deleted scenes, we get extra context that he wants his own movie, and we get to see it. And it has two of the best jokes.
Oh, baby Sky, it's a, it's a, a, a bird. It's a, a, a plane. No, he's a bird. You killed Elmer. You can't kill Elmer. Oh, he comes back from the dead later. Horribly scarred and even more insane. Kids love it. I don't want to play a crazy clown. Elmer Fudd appears also giving context that he works with Runner Bros, so his return and Bugs talking about how they work together makes sense. There's a lot of missed opportunities here, but they had the opportunities and even went for them. Welcome to the underground. Uh, I, I really don't know any way of talking about the events of the plot without tackling them in order, so get ready for nostalgia critic format. <laughs> The film starts with the no beak thing. So far, my expectations are, are lowered. Come on, he has no digestive system when this is pulled off. It disappears and reappears. There's a lot of references in this movie, especially the beginning. It doesn't retract that much. Except when it takes like a minute, Batman car destroying Water Tower. Great, mostly because it's official in this universe that the Animaniacs are dead. They, they aren't in there. Psycho reference what would be better if they went inside Granny's house for this one. A lot of people hate these two, and yeah, I can see it. I, I hate to say Brendan Fraser is better than Michael Jordan. He's basically a cartoon character already. He was George of the Jungle. <laughs> he has a couple good jokes, like the joke where his fictional character talks about how the real Brendan Fraser is a scumbag. He's not the worst. If they always have to have a human main character, then you could do way worse than Brendan Fraser. As for I don't know who this is, uh... Everybody. I know why this character needs to be here, just to haul around bugs, but... Just, just, just rewrite it, just rewrite it. It feels like there's a big structure problem with the whole plot. DJ is plot important. He needs to find his dad and stop this guy from, uh turning people into monkeys kate is a uh, daffy important she she has to get daffy back but she's paired with bugs and, and the characters kicking off the main plot is daffy and and you know brendan fraser this movie revolves around daffy that leaves bugs just kind of there which is weird you don't expect bugs to be doing absolutely nothing but here we are as for daffy he's great in this movie he has an actual arc well i, I want to say arc but it, you know it's basically he has a purpose daffy wants to have a purpose and he saves everyone with the power of ripping off his beak god damn it daffy is less energetic and less of bugs but insane i, I kind of like this version of him a lot bugs was just you know here and they they did nothing with him yeah! Oh yeah, I said I would go over the plot, so uh, I like when Brendan Fraser calls his dad and he immediately doesn't notice that he's a secret agent. They take a car to Las Vegas and so does the Bugs gang because apparently Acme is an evil company trying to find a monkey crystal. I like Acme being the big bad, I mean who else would it be not Frisky Puppy, that's for sure. Acme being an evil corporation feels like foreshadowing for decades. As for the actual villain, Mr. Chairman, I'm actually fine with him. I know I hate the dog, but that's because it would you could replace this with anything and it would be better. There's not a canon Acme CEO or something. It had to be a new character. And he's like Judge Doom, but not all my fears and nightmares at the end of the movie. Other than random characters that keep on appearing in each location, I really like the weird original characters in this movie. Mr. Chairman can be overacted at times, but he has a couple funny lines. The two Warner Bros is a funny concept. Then there's Bob Smith, played by professional wrestler Bill Goldberg. He's like Chairman's right hand man. I can't even begin to think why this character is in the movie. He's so underdeveloped. But I, I kind of want to see more of him. Th this character existing is the eighth wonder of the world. Also, he probably has the best wiki article in all of history. Full name, Robert Smith, alias Bob. Origin, Looney Tunes back in action. Occupation, Mr. Chairman's right hand man. Tasmanian Devil's Wife. Originally, more was planned for him, and we would have had an actual line, but no, we're, we're living in the worst timeline. But anyway, they make it to Las Vegas, where Yosemite Sam owns a casino club thing. We meet this useless character, and like, this is, this is actually the worst character in the movie. But the small guys in Yosemite Sam costumes? 10 out of 10. 
Yosemite Sam is tasked with getting some important cards. Sorry, I, I, I forgot why it was important. I got distracted by the weird way these animated guys fight Brendan Fraser. The mime acting in this movie is, don't look too great, except this scene. Th this looks really good for some reason. I'm gonna come up on you. The card goes into this thing, Foghorn Leghorn. Oh, well, I said, oh, wait your turn, sir. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Fold. When Daffy Duo escapes, they try to get into this their car. <laughs> Meet up with Bugs Gang. Yosemite Sam steals a NASCAR, and this leads up to the best joke in the film. Roll it out, roll it out. Oh. But innocent people could be hurt. Roll it out the window. It'll send the wrong message to children. Roll it out. Next, they go in the desert where we have Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner. Why, why was he on the movie cover? Mr. Chairman calls Coyote to take out the group, classic arson. They make the joke that Coyote never talks, but you know, uh, he does. But this is this is an underground type thing. They, they don't want you knowing about this. Do those sniper lasers get bright? I really like this Walmart joke just because they point out it's soulless. Also, why Walmart? I, I know they got everything. $3 rotisserie chickens, but they also have gonorrhea. A random portal opens up to Area 52. Uh, okay. So I like a lot in this scene all the references. The Dalek is great. Marvin was captured by the government, but seriously, what what is this thing? Some of these are too terrifying. CGI thing is, is just funny. Would, would kids be okay seeing this thing? The the brain guy is really just, just the worst thing here. Why did this turn into the angry video game nerd movie? Everybody falls in love somehow. References like this are just sad. No, Bugs, I'm watching this on its final HBO Max streaming day. Big missed opportunity to have Gossamer show up. He's not in the movie anywhere, but there's there's Egghead. Brendan Fraser gets this Game Boy telephone thing that's used in two scenes, and now we get Paris. Surprised that Pepe Le Pew only gets one joke during this segment. Okay, so the mystery gang get what they needed, but Elmer Fudd shows up and explains that he isn't an actor and was always secretly evil. A fight breaks out, but not before Elmer says the best line in the entire movie. I'll make with the card so I can please my dark master. If I put up this quote and said it was by Elmer Fudd, you would diagnose me with being a dirty lying scumbag. Can we appreciate what setting up Elmer Fudd as an actor insinuates? After years of acting as an evil version of himself, he became insane and actually became evil. This is the plot to Joker 2019. Say hi, Will A really nice scene begins classic Elmer vs. Bugs and Daffy, but they go through all these art styles, official confirmation that Elmer is a self-sadist. They go in the screen painting and stuff, it's great. They even beat Elmer Fudd with the power of art style. Wait, is he okay? I am the Elmer Fudd. When my eyes are dry and my skin is cold, I want you to keep one promise. Please never forget me. What am I? I am. Back to B Crew. She's kidnapped by our, our, our best friend, Bob Smith. I actually think it would be funnier if Brendan Fraser was kidnapped. They, they, they don't need her anyway. He just ditches her after getting the thing he needed. Just take it. You'd go faster. This is also the point where cameos got annoying. Okay, Pepe is nothing. Beaky buzzard with one actual sentence and a week at the camera. They wrote in a scene so Brendan Fraser can get shorts. But why? Why would you do? Why would? Why would you want to wear? Why? 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 So his pants get blown off, as they do in your average kids movie. The three bears laugh at him, and he like traumatizes the papa bear to get his shorts. But it's animated on him. But when Brendan Fraser gets it, it's real. So it like transforms based on who interacts on it. If I touched Yosemite Sam, would he become real? I I'm asking the hard questions tonight. The beast but whatever, instant transition to the jungle. Okay, okay, at this point, Chairman calls upon Tasmanian Devil. If you want to know why I didn't mention him when I said the villain should come back, well, Taz turned Bob Smith into this. Your counter-argument? In the jungle, the group meets up with Granny, Sylvester, and Tweety. They're, they're gonna be evil, aren't they? 
I was one fourth correct. At this point in the movie, it's even exhausted with itself, which shouldn't be funny, but it is. It's like watching a train conductor crash it on purpose with all families inside, side split in comedy. So the team has the blue monkey thing, but Chairman is here, he takes it, gives it to Marvin, Toons chase after him, then Chairman dooms the three actual people. Do you think you can cause permanent damage to your jaw from yawning? Again, Frisky Puppy, my favorite character. All the stuff with Marvin is pretty good, glad he was given a second chance. We get the driving directions joke, but then he comes back after being defeated for a second time in this movie. The beast inside is a lightsaber battle happens for some reason? I actually have no idea what's going on. There's a Duck Dodgers reference. Okay, so Daffy saves the day with the beak thing. I'm seething. And the chairman is now a monkey, and they leave a widow crying. Why include that back in action? And happy ending. These three, well, they're not dead. And Daffy will maybe probably not be seen as a hero. I love this porky joke. Everyone just leaves. Do you think this is why the movie failed? Because we didn't get a proper that's all, folks. Wow, this movie. It has major problems, but I, I like it too much. Structure problems and small annoyances are plenty, but come on, it, it's got the charm. Joe Dante wanted better Space Jam, and he made it. I, I think the way to go would just to replace the humans with Porky. It sounds weird, but come on, he's like Kate, a straight man to the wacky characters, and if Bugs took over Brendan's role, it would have just made him an actual character. Porky is the key to all the problems with this movie. But maybe Frisky Puppy. Oh, oh wait, I, I think I skipped part of the movie. Oh, okay, so th this is the ending. And wait, a everything is a movie inside this movie about Daffy wanting to be in a movie? So what I just watched didn't even happen in the universe it happened in? Sometimes everybody falls.